What are megatrends? When you see a news story about a new app sweeping the world, when the changing weather alters your insurance risk, or when you use your phone to do business in Southeast Asia, you are experiencing the impact of this century's megatrends. Megatrends are large transformative processes with global reach, broad scope, and dramatic impact. Companies, governments, and individuals use megatrends for long-term planning, policy development, and even for making personal decisions. The term megatrends was popularized by John Nesbitt, who in 1982 identified forces that were transitioning the world from an industrial society to an information society. These are our six megatrends for the 21st century. Impactful technology. Accelerating individualization. Demographic change. Rapid urbanization. Climate and resource security. And economic power shift. Short-lived shocks like a pandemic or regional conflicts, while dramatic in nature, are not megatrends. Things like the metaverse, the gender pay gap, or even smart cities are not megatrends, although they may be part of a wider megatrend. Nor are megatrends aspirational targets like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. However, understanding the six megatrends is necessary to achieve the SDGs. Megatrends are fundamental forces shaping our world. Understanding them can also inform long-term strategic thinking, helping us to make better decisions for the future today. As individuals, megatrends can also help us to make better personal choices about where to live, how to invest, or even what career to pursue. The six megatrends of the 21st century are already underway. It took the telephone 75 years to reach 100 million users. The mobile phone got there within 16 years. Twitter in five, Facebook in four and a half, Instagram took two years, and ChatGPT landed its 100 millionth user in just two months. In this, the fourth industrial revolution, impactful technology is transforming the way we work, think, and live our lives. The pace of change of this megatrend is astonishing. At the start of this century, barely 3% of the world's population were connected to the internet. Around two thirds are now online, and it is one of the United Nations SDGs to achieve universal access by 2030. Already this century's innovation list is long. Artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, drones, smart devices, 3D printing, cloud computing, blockchain technologies, virtual and augmented reality, apps and social platforms, commercial space technology, and the unfolding possibilities of CRISPR and gene editing. Generative AI is the next general purpose technology, as transformative as the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. It will impact every sector of the economy, and those who engage creatively with generative AI will be the leaders in their field. The market for AI is expected to grow by 20 times across this decade, reaching almost 2 trillion US dollars by 2030. Impactful technology also poses significant practical and ethical challenges. How should big tech be regulated? Considering they now control information flows and communication infrastructures across the world, where should we draw the line between enhanced products and services and our right to privacy? Gene editing promises a means to cure blindness, but can we avoid the desire to create the perfect baby? Who will be the winners and losers in job automation? The challenge for governments, corporations and leaders will be to ensure that these new technologies reach their potential while being accessible, equitable and socially beneficial. Accelerating individualization is a megatrend changing societies around the world. This megatrend stems from powerful, interconnected social and technological developments. 
Customization and the proliferation of options for consumers has replaced mass production and a one-size-fits-all approach which characterized business in the post-war era. One important factor driving this customization is the availability of a staggering amount of data. This has been made possible due to changes in technology. The widespread use of smartphones and access to the internet have provided unparalleled information about our preferences. Our digital footprint informs business decisions and shapes offerings for consumers, resulting in hyper-personalized products and services. Social media and other digital forums used by 4.76 billion people worldwide have enabled many new online communities. It is easier than ever for superfans, gardeners, gamers and squash players and conspiracy theorists to meet others with similar interests from around the world. Algorithms have also created echo chambers, amplifying political polarization in many countries. Social media also places the focus on the self and encourages selective self-presentation. These platforms enable individuals to influence others and effect change, from activists and populist leaders through to Instagram influencers and TikTok celebrities. These platforms also facilitate the spread of misinformation and disinformation, distorting personal and public conversations with serious implications for social cohesion and public well-being. Social media is also blamed for the rise in anxiety, depression and self-harm, particularly in people born since the turn of the century. Experts have expressed concern about how this increased fragility will affect individuals' work lives and its impact on creativity and innovation. The way we work is also changing. In many industries, instead of being in the office from 9 to 5, people are now part of a flexible, more distributed and individualized workforce. Especially since COVID-19, technology has enabled remote and hybrid work, accelerating freelancing and the gig economy. New forms of identity expression are also flourishing intersecting differences in sex and gender, age, ethnicity, subcultures and beliefs are also reflected in business, with the marketplace increasingly catering for diverse communities. Accelerating individualization has many points of connection to the technology megatrend. Both will increase in impact as this century progresses. After more than 200 years of rapid growth, the world's population is set to peak at 11 billion by the end of this century. People are having fewer children and living longer. This is the demographic change megatrend, a profound population shift that will impact individuals, families and communities. The share of people over 65 will grow from 10% in 2022 to 16% in 2050. As populations age, there will be fewer workers to support the growing number of people in retirement. Today, for every elderly person, there are four people of working age. By 2050, that ratio is projected to be just two people of working age, supporting four elderly persons. Around 40 countries, including places like Japan, Italy and Poland, are already experiencing declining populations. China reached a major turning point in 2022 when its population began to contract after six decades of growth. By 2050, at least 88 more nations will join this list. Yet, in some parts of the world, the demographic trend is heading in the other direction. The population of Sub-Saharan Africa will nearly double to more than 2 billion by the middle of the century. And by 2070, this will be the most populous place on Earth, surpassing Asia. Countries such as India, Pakistan and the Philippines will also continue to grow. By 2050, 25% of the world's population, including 40% of all people under 18, will live in Africa. This continent and its dynamic population growth will present new trade and development opportunities, accelerating economic power shifts. For the rest of the globe, this unprecedented aging will require considerable adjustment. 
migration will become the sole driver of population growth in most high-income countries. There will be opportunities for innovation in products and services, particularly in the health and housing sectors. Flexible job opportunities for traditionally marginalized groups and the more diverse and inclusive workforce will be essential if countries are to improve their productivity and address the labor shortage. Retraining and upskilling will also be vital. Understanding and responding to the distinctive demographic pressures around the world will be essential if we want to thrive in the 21st century. The future is urban. Currently, more than half of the people in the world live in cities, which account for more than 80% of global GDP. The rapid urbanization megatrend is the story of where most of us live. By 2050, just over two thirds of humanity will be urban dwellers. Cities are engines of creativity and innovation, and most urban dwellers experience higher standards of living than those in rural areas. Cities can also be more efficient in terms of land use and the distribution of resources. Yet, one in three urban residents lives in a slum household. Cities cover only 2% of the world's land surface, but the activities within their boundaries consume more than three quarters of the world's resources. Poorly planned urbanization is a key driver of CO2 emissions. Urbanization is occurring at different rates around the world. The UN says that the bulk of urban growth will happen in the cities of developing nations. Eight out of 10 of the world's most populous cities are currently in Asia. By the next century, 13 of the largest megacities are predicted to be in Africa, and three will be in India. None of the top 20 will be found in America, China, or Europe, as aging populations shrink large cities in these regions. Africa will also feature the world's largest urban agglomeration. By the end of the century, half a billion people will live in the nearly 1,000 kilometer stretch from Lagos in Nigeria to Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire. While urbanization creates huge opportunities for smart, eco-friendly cities, it also makes demands on infrastructure, the environment, and the provision of jobs and services especially in developing economies. Increased density and an aging population means we need to rethink healthcare and public services to better share urban spaces. More congested cities pose climate challenges from rising emissions, but also offer potential solutions. This megatrend is an opportunity to develop low carbon and resource efficient cities of the future. We will need to ensure that future cities offer a decent standard of living and increased opportunities for the people living in them. Business as usual has delivered a more affluent world and a degraded planet. The climate and resource security megatrend captures the climate change trajectory and the pressure this is placing on the world's natural resources. Global average temperatures will rise by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the middle of the next decade, unless the international community joins together to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 50% by 2030. Even at this rate, some communities and ecosystems will not survive. More than 3 billion people are living in places that are highly vulnerable to extreme weather events. Even at 1.5 degrees Celsius, almost a quarter of the world population will be exposed to flooding, while almost a billion people will experience water and heat stress. Roughly half of the world's population currently experiences severe water scarcity for at least part of the year. If current trends continue, 33 countries will face severe water shortages by 2040. To feed the population, we will need a 60% increase in food production by 2050. Yet global crop yields will then be 7% lower due to climate change. Seafood is a major source of protein for more than 3 billion people. 
However, ocean warming and overfishing will see a 64% fall in the world's fish stock by the end of this century. Averting this megatrend will require both adaptation and mitigation strategies. Ecosystem-based adaptation, or green infrastructure, harnesses natural solutions to protect and restore land and sea, and can boost food security, deliver economic benefits, and promote carbon sequestration. Examples include cultivating mangroves as a form of flood defense, and the Great Green Wall project, in which 21 African countries are planting a huge belt of trees the width of the continent to combat the spread of the Sahara Desert. In 2021, around 12% of global primary energy came from renewable sources. To meet net zero emissions by 2050, more than two-thirds of energy consumption will need to come from renewables. The world urgently needs more aggressive decarbonization strategies. Implementing effective plans will require much stronger international cooperation. Business as usual is no longer a viable model. The world's economy is shifting as Asia becomes the largest trading region, fueling the rise of a newly affluent community and a different breed of corporations. Just two countries, China and India, account for 36% of the world's population and 25% of global GDP. We will see a restructuring of the global economy, with non-OECD economies expected to account for 57% of GDP by 2030. The economic influence of the G7 countries will shift to the emerging seven. By 2040, these E7 economies will be double that of the G7. India and China will take up a rising share of global output as the world's economic center of gravity continues to shift towards Asia. China's GDP will likely surpass that of the US by 2035, while India's GDP could do so by 2075. However, the individual purchasing power of citizens in the West will likely remain higher than that of consumers in both China and India, and it is probable that no country will be clearly economically dominant. By 2030, 4.8 billion people will be middle class. This globalized, more affluent community will possess significant purchasing power. Two-thirds of them will reside in the Asia-Pacific region. Globalization itself has produced unequal returns. The shift in wealth to the rich will accelerate. Currently, about half of the world's wealth is held by only 1% of the population. By 2030, the richest 1% will own two-thirds. Rising inequality is also challenging trust in traditional global economic institutions and agreements. Geopolitical tensions, leading to more frequent trade wars, rising protectionism, and the potential for military conflict will drive uncertainty and instability. How will individuals, corporations, and governments renegotiate their expectations of one another in an era of accelerating individualization and rapidly changing economies? Economic power shifts of this magnitude will fundamentally alter national and individual prosperity. These opportunities, along with significant risks, will play out on the world stage. These are the University of Sydney Business School's six megatrends. They help us think about the future for more informed decisions in the present. <laughs>